Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. You can find us online at rce-cast.com. And yes, we are still doing these episodes. I know it's it's been a we took a little bit of time off. Uh, we did some things, and we are just going forward with this. But I have on the other end, as usual, Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and one of the authors of OpenMPI. Jeff, thanks again for helping us out. Yeah, we're back. We took a summer hiatus. That's what I'm saying. It's my story, and I'm I'm sticking to it. Uh, so we are just one month away from SC. I just got my travel stuff done, and I believe we will both be there. Oh, yeah, so I'm going to be there, too. Big party in Salt Lake. And our, our unnamed mystery guest, which you'll hear in a minute, uh, he'll be there as well And uh, for the big, big party in uh, Salt Lake. And I'll tell you, I can safely say I am already being crushed by my supercomputing deadlines. I have so many things to get done before then. I have escaped the past couple of years of not having any deliverables at supercomputing, but... This year, I've got a lot of them, and they're killing me. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll all be down there. Um, you know, We'll be probably tweeting a little bit and other things like that, and you can find all those linked off the rce-cast.com website. Um, also, you can find all the old back episodes on there and everything else. And you can find a link to Jeff's blog where he recently announced something about MPI3. Yeah, that's right. Big deal. That took a, it was a long time in the making. Uh, there's a lot of new, interesting things happening in the MPI3 arena, and they're actually being implemented in the not future, and a lot of interesting stuff there. Um, I won't go too much into it here, but there, there is uh, at least one thing that we'll talk about MPI3 a little later here in the, in the show. Okay. Well, here, let's, let's go ahead and roll into that. Our guest today is Steve Lionel. Uh, he works for Intel, but uh, he is here to talk about modern Fortran and what the different updates of Fortran and what they've provided for scientific computing. So, Steve, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself? Thanks, Brock. Uh, well, I've been in and around Fortran for going on 35 years now. It only seems like longer. Uh, I started uh, back in 78 with uh, DEC on VAX Fortran, and I've uh, been working on compilers, Fortran runtime libraries, and now, uh, since 2001, I work for Intel, and I'm doing uh, technical support for Intel uh, for the compilers, uh, part of Intel's developer products division, and we do more than compilers. We have uh, some nifty analysis tools that are uh, certainly of use for Fortran uh, programmers. Okay, so let's get a little bit of background here. Uh, can you give us an idea exactly what Fortran is and what it aimed to do? Fortran was designed back in uh, the 19, late 1950s as a way of letting scientists uh, write programs rather than, uh, than have uh, other people try to translate what their formulas into uh, computer language. The, the name Fortran stood for formula translation, and it was a pretty novel idea at the time. Uh, the early Fortran uh, language, as it was defined, was really very small. Um, over the years, it has become standardized, became a, initially an, an ANSI standard in 1966, and there have been several revisions to it since then. Let's see, 77, 97, 90, 95, 2003, and 2008. Um, 2008 is the latest Fortran standard. It is. Uh, it was designed f with operations that uh, scientists and engineers and high performance people like to use, and it, it's still very popular. So, what is the main motivation for continued development? So, I mean, Fortran is pretty old. It's very mature. It has a, a lot of features in it. But what? What? motivates the continued development of new features? What do people uh, need new, basically? And, and why do you guys keep working on this? Well, the, one of the great things about Fortran is that it allows you to mix old code, that code that was written 40, or year, 40 years ago, will still compile and run in today's Fortran compilers. But people also want uh, the things that some of the other whippersnapper languages have, uh, such as uh, derived types, polymorphism, dynamic allocation, parallel processing. Uh, and at, we're responding to the needs of the community that are developing applications, and they want to use these in Fortran. So the standard has evolved. So why is Fortran so popularly used? I mean, it's, it's, an, it's an older language. People are like, well, don't we have anything better? Why is it still so popular? 
Uh, well, it's it's saying that it's old is is perhaps uh, not really good. I mean, I'm old, but I hope I'm still useful. Um, <laughs> The the nice thing, the benefits of the Fortran language are that it tends to allow you to create very efficient programs that run fast. It has types of operations that are very commonly used in high-performance computing, such as arrays uh, and derived types and other things. And it is compatible with an enormous body of tried-and-true Fortran code that's been written over the years and decades. And it's just, you know, people are, are familiar with it. It it works, and it doesn't have a lot of the uh, messiness that some of the other languages have. Uh, tries to be clean, although the standard keeps getting bigger and bigger. Now, how do you tread the fine line there between, you know, staying away from being messy but still using you know some of the features from the young whippersnapper things like types and uh, polymorphism and all those things. The way the standards committee has tended to work it is that they say, okay, we we're looking to add something such as polymorphism. So you look at that and you say, okay, well C plus plus is is established and they've got polymorphism. What from C, what concepts from C plus plus work? Which ones could be could we make look Fortran like, and which ones are pretty messy and that we don't want anything to do with? And it's it's a give and take. There's compromises, and so for example, with polymorphism, Fortran has the equivalent of destructors, and Fortran they're called finalizers, but it doesn't have C plus constructors, uh, although you can sort of create one. Um, so sometimes there are little things left out. They try to make fit it into the Fortran view of the world, and that allows existing Fortran programmers to adapt these new features without going crazy. Now, I'm on the MPI forum, and so I'm, I'm well familiar with how complex some of these discussions can get in a standardization body kinds of things. But maybe could you lead us through this a little bit, though? So the I idea of having a destructor but not a constructor, give us a little bit of the flavor about what was the rationale that led to that decision? Well, I, wa I wasn't part of the discussions at that time, but my understanding is that they couldn't agree on uh, the particular semantics for some operation that happens off independently when you bring a, a variable into scope, which is what a constructor would be, and decided that you, they would add to the language features that you could essentially write your own constructor that did whatever setup needed to be done. Um, as I said, I, I wasn't there at the time when they talked about that, so I don't know why. Um, finalizers, destructors were hard enough as it was, and perhaps they ran out of time. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes when, some, they, when they decide that we just can't keep adding more stuff, they say, we'll defer that discussion to a later uh, standard, uh, and that has happened in the past. So these different updates to Fortran... Has, has the focus use always been scientific applications, or is this also, are they looking to have, you know, kernels written in Fortran for, you know, whole operating systems? The focus has absolutely been HPC and engineering. Um, it is, there's never been an intention for Fortran to be the universal language. Uh, and in fact, Fortran, I think, is unusual, if not unique, in embracing the concept of mixed language programming with the C interoperability features that were added in Fortran 2003. Uh, you know, many programmers had mixed Fortran and other languages over the past, but always using extensions that different vendors had implemented, and now there is a standard way of doing this. So there is this notion of Fortran isn't every the solution to every problem. And by keeping focusing on HPC and engineering and scientific programming, we can make Fortran to be excellent for that and not uh, dilute it with concepts that are not that are foreign to the Fortran world. Okay, but along that same line, have you had much focus adding features to the language that are specific to 
helping out doing math and you said you know formula translation Sure. Well, the, there are certainly array operations. It was a, a new thing in Fortran 90, and that has been expanded uh, over time. There's the concept of elemental functions where it's a function that takes a scalar, but you pass it an array, and the compiler essentially calls it on every element. There are re reduction uh, f intrinsics. There are Many uh, types, of, there's floating point control. There was uh, IEEE floating point standard uh, support added in Fortran 2003. Uh, many of the things that the HPC programmers had been struggling to use as extensions or operating system specific things that be, were added into the Fortran language so that you could write standard conforming and portable code that used these features. Now, one of these other things that is uh, kind of the relationship to MPI. Now, there's no direct relationship to MPI and Fortran, but on the MPI forum, I was part of the whole new Fortran 08 bindings uh, for MPI, and that turned out to be an incredibly complex topic for a variety of reasons. But it, uh, it, it created the opportunity for a great collaboration between the MPI forum and the J3 committee, which is the, the Fortran standards body. And we were very pleased uh, that the J3 committee actually added some things to Fortran that were very helpful to MPI um, that enabled a, a new, much stronger, robust set of, of Fortran bindings. I, can you comment on that process at all? Sure. I, I was sort of, sort of involved in it. Um, the uh, Fortran committee has long had collaborations with other standards bodies, uh, MPI, OpenMP, uh, and, and others. And they, we, there were proposals that for things that MPI really needed, in particular the equivalent of C's void star uh, and the ability to pass Fortran arrays to uh, some external library that uh, knew how to access the array and the dimensions and all of, and things like that. Uh, so we added to the Fortran language in a uh, extension to Fortran 2008 called a technical specification uh, on s expanded C interoperability. There were three basic things that were added. One was a concept called type star, which is essentially a void. Uh, there was dimension dot dot, which means something that matches any rank uh, of array. And dot dot was used because that's sort of a colon on its side. Both star and colon had a, already had meanings in Fortran, so we had dot dot. Uh, and there was a set of routines that could be called from C to manipulate Fortran array descriptors in a standard conforming manner. And those things put together would help uh, MPI provide a an efficient and easily usable library for use by Fortran programmers. And then I think you also added a, a third thing too, or you strengthened the definition of the keyword asynchronous too, right? Oh yes, that's right. Uh, the, that was something that was added uh, in Fortran 2003, and its meaning was a little bit ambiguous. And so, yes, the, there was some tightening up as to exactly what that meant, allowing the compiler to do optimizations um, and not, not losing optimizations when it realized that, for example, an MPI call might update an array after the call returned. Yeah, for example, like a, a non-blocking MPI receive where the user application specifies a buffer and we want the Fortran compiler not to do any optimization on that buffer until much later when uh, the user pulls MPI for completion and says, yes, the receive has completed behind the scenes for you there. But we had to you know, indicate to the Fortran compiler that the buffer might be changing behind the scenes and beyond your control. For example, hardware might be writing to it directly and things like that. So this actually made uh, non-blocking operations safe in MPI Fortran, which is a very, very good thing. Okay, so we've been throwing a lot of things out here, and something I see a lot is from users like, well, I need a Fortran 90 compiler. Well, 1990 was um, over 20 years ago. So what 
are the current like modern specifications of Fortran that have been updated since then? The current version of Fortran, the latest one that was adopted in 2010, is Fortran 2008, which is a pretty large jump over what was in Fortran 2003 that was adopted in 2004, and it was a pretty large jump over Fortran 95, which was adopted in 97. There are no full-language Fortran 2008 compilers out there, none. There are two full-language Fortran 2003 compilers, IBM and Cray. Uh, IBM for their, their AIX systems and Cray for their uh, Cray OS systems, not the ones that run Linux. Uh, Intel is pretty close with Fortran 2003, and we have a bunch of Fortran 2008 features, but uh, we're not fully there yet. And some other vendors are at, at varying stages in Fortran 2003 compliance. The fact that uh, some eight years after the adoption of Fortran 2003, there are only two 2003 compilers out there, has caused the Standards Committee to sort of pause at adding new features. So the next revision of the Fortran standard will not have a whole bunch of new things. So is this like taking are, are the different compiler manufacturers kind of like taking what they think is the most likely to be used features well we most of them well it depends on the vendors the the hardware and software vendors the commercial vendors look to their users and say you know what are you looking for and intel and and the others uh, we listen to our users and they say, you know, we want to use this feature. And then there are some other features that they are not asking for. And I think the two Fortran 2003 features we hear least about are user-defined drive type I.O. and parameterized drive types, which uh, we haven't implemented and many of the other compiler vendors have not implemented. I think only Cray and IBM have those. Um, but... It is a case of listening to the users, and this is also why uh, several of the compilers have implemented some Fortran 2008 features, because our users found those more compelling than the missing Fortran 2003 features. So your personal opinion, if I was going to be writing a new Fortran code today, what's the newest standard I could write to to make sure my stuff was usable across the largest amount of platforms? I think you would find that Fortran 2003 would meet your needs. There are quite a few compilers that implement the most useful parts of Fortran 2003. Uh, there might be some, you might want to steer clear of those features that aren't implemented. There's this great table that's updated, I think, quarterly in the uh, IEEE ACM Fortran Forum magazine that is a t uh, list for a whole bunch of standard features, which compilers have those features and any limitations are there. So I would certainly recommend checking that out if you want to know which compilers support a particular feature. I will tell you that for the Intel compiler, we document in each release which Fortran 2003 and 2008 features we support, and that list does grow with each new version. So on a similar vein, but according to my own bias here, uh, for the three or four Fortran 2008 features that MPI can exploit, uh, what do you see as the implementation timeline, or if you can even comment on that, for Intel, and what do you think the adoption rate of, of the others will be? Uh, well, that's... Is this a bad question? Should I not ask no, this? It, no, it's a, it's a great question. It's one I okay. get all the time. <laughs> okay. Um, we are... Definitely looking at Fortran 2008 features to implement. We, of course, like all vendors, have uh, sort of limited resources. We can't do everything instantly, so we have to set priorities, and it's going to take some number of years. We have committed uh, that we will implement all of Fortran 2003. I expect that we'll eventually get to all of Fortran 2008, uh, but it's going to take some time, and we have to look very carefully at what our customers are uh, are demanding 
and which ones they want to use and which ones we think would be the most useful. We did take quite a, a big leap of faith in implementing the co-array feature from 4chan 2008. We're, uh, Intel's the only uh, vendor, mainstream vendor to offer that at this time. Cray has had it for a long time, um, even before it was standardized in Fortran 2008. And there's been a lot of excitement in the Fortran community over co-arrays. G Fortran, the uh, part of the GCC tool suite, they are implementing pieces of the co-arrays. And uh, there's a, an open UH compiler from Rice uh, University of Houston, I think. I'm trying to remember where they exactly where they are. Um, that supports co arrays but doesn't support much of Fortran 2003. So uh, that's got a, a lot of excitement in the community because it's a, a new parallel feature. Maybe we'll get that into a later question. Uh, parallel feature in the language, and that's something new for Fortran. Okay, so actually, we've got a little bit of a question about how these additions are added. You know, we've got all these modern versions of Fortran that have added all these features on top of the previous versions. Should we call the uh, old gray beard stereotype dead and we should uh, call that done? And if that's the case, if there's not this magical panel of old Fortran gray beard setting these things, is it just Fortran compiler vendors kind of working together to set these standards or are there people besides compiler manufacturers having input into this? Absolutely. There are quite a few members of the Fortran Standards Committee who are uh, users there from, for example, national labs, universities, uh, governments, um, and they often drive the proposals for what's to be what's to be added. Um, there aren't quite as many Fortran vendors in the world as there used to be. Um, the Fortran Standards Committee is quite a bit smaller than it was, let's say, even five or six years ago. But I was at the most recent or the most recent international me uh, meeting uh, that was held at uh, IBM Canada in June. In fact, there's a meeting of the American Committee, uh, J3, going on this week out in Las Vegas. So there, it's a collaboration between the vendors and the users. And as far as graybeards go, there's quite a few young people who are uh, in using Fortran and driving the process as well. So let's talk about some of these new features here. What what things have been added, in, say, in, in uh, 03 and 08 and so on that are specific to parallel or distributed or shared memory and things like that? Um, well, it would be in 2008 was the first of those. There are two particular features that were added to Fortran 2008. One is co-arrays, which is a, a partition global address space language that provides for distributing an application and the distrib distribution could be on a shared memory system or it could be across a cluster. And Intel's implementation, which we layer on MPI, uh, does support both shared memory and distributed memory implementations. There's also a feature called do concurrent, which I like to call for all done right. For all was a feature from a discarded extension to Fortran 90 called High Performance Fortran and was adopted into Fortran 95 and it was an attempt to uh, to make something that sort of looked like a, a do loop that would run in parallel except that the semantics were so restrictive it could not effectively be parallelized. So in Fortran 2008, do concurrent was uh, provided and that looks much more like a regular do loop except that the standard says if you have this then each iteration of the loop can be run in parallel and in any order. And then it's up to the programmer to make sure that there are no loop dependencies. The Intel compiler will parallelize a do concurrent if you ask for auto-parallelization. Now, what's the relation then between do concurrent and OpenMP, for example? There is no direct relationship. Uh, our particular implementation uses OpenMP underlying the do concurrent and auto-parallel uh, implementation, but there's nothing specific there. Uh, you, of course, OpenMP can be used in Fortran programmers, programs, has been used for many, many years, uh, and is probably one of the more popular ways of getting parallelism in a Fortran program in a shared memory environment. So is there a reason that I would use 
do concurrent over OpenMP? I mean, now, right now, you said you're the only vendor, I think, that has done do concurrent. And so for portability, I, I might still choose OpenMP. But semantic-wise or performance-wise, is there a reason to use one over the other? Um, I, I said we were the only ones who did co-arrays. I, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. The, that's fine. I don't actually know what the state of do concurrent is uh, w- across other vendors. The programming model is different. You have to look at what your application needs. Some applications, I mean, if you, you want to think of it as the difference between OpenMP and MPI, that not every application is perfectly suited for one or the other, and there are some applications that use a mix of both. And that's the way it is here. You have to, uh, if you have something where there's a lot of computation being done uh, sort of individually in a slice and not a lot of communication between the instances of, of the code, then something looser such as co-arrays or MPI would be effective. If you're simply doing something tight parallelization uh, with, with, let's say, a large array, uh, and then do concurrent might be more useful, as is OpenMP. So co-array, uh, let's, let's talk about co-array a little bit. Uh, what what is the space for co-array versus like we already have things like MPI that seems to be available on almost every platform and we also have things like one-sided memory operations you know shmem and other things uh, why why co-array why something else well first of all co-array is in the fortran standard and therefore the the syntax and the use of it is standardized whereas MPI is is you know, mostly standard, but uh, there are sometimes little differences in implementation among the different MPI versions. Um, the, also, co-arrays are well integrated into the Fortran language. You can do I.O. of a co-array. Uh, you can call a routine and pass a co-array. There are intrinsics that get information about co-arrays, and you can sort of, just using regular Fortran syntax, reach out and, and touch a uh, piece of a co-array that's in another image. With MPI, you're, you're talking about library calls, and the compiler doesn't really know about what that library call does. With co-arrays, there's much more, the compiler knows a lot more about what's going on. But doesn't it also put a lot of extra burden on the compiler to be aware of, like, the most effective way to transfer data across different types of networks on different platforms rather than just being aware of, like, CPU architecture and things like that? Well, the compiler doesn't really need to know about that. That's more of an, uh, an issue for the underlying transport layer. And there are, there are many possible transport layers available. I know that G4Tran uh, and is, they're using one, and uh, OpenUH is using uh, something, uh, a, a PGAS library. We use MPI, that's, which is just one possible thing. We layer on Intel MPI, which is an implementation we know about that has been optimized uh, for use with different types of underlying uh, fabrics. So uh, the compiler doesn't need to worry about that. The compiler does need to worry about making it efficient to do the communication. And yes, a good MPI programmer, for example, might be able to write a program that works better than a co program. But the co program is uh, perhaps easier to understand more Fortran-like, and integrates better with the rest of the Fortran language. Do you have many customers who are writing Coray Fortran stuff? Because I, I would love to hear about some real-world uh, expertise with us because I think we all agree that MPI is not necessarily the answer. It's probably among the most uh, prominent and most used parallel paradigms, but it is certainly not the only answer and is not the best answer for for many applications. And OpenMP was supposed to be uh, the big MPI killer, and it kind of isn't. And so is, is Coray Fortran posed to take over that space for at least some classes of applications? I certainly do know of customers who are shifting from MPI to Coarays. Um The semantics are close enough in many ways that it makes this sort of easy. Um, if you've already got an MPI application, you can probably start inserting co-array stuff without completely rewriting it. Uh, that wouldn't be quite the case with an OpenMP application. Um, I don't know that I can name customers, but I, I, we do have some that are using them in real-world applications. 
So is the new features for Fortran added anything to hook into some accelerators or any type of third-party peripherals rather than traditional CPUs? Um, what we're looking at is the OpenMP committee is standardizing syntax for offloading uh, work to a uh, some external processor. Of course, Intel has the, the new Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors um, that uh, we recently announced and are, are shipping now. Um, you'll see a lot of exciting things about that, especially if you come to supercomputing. We'll, there will be a lot of customers doing presentations on how they used uh, Intel Xeon Phi. So far, that's supported with Intel-specific directives in the Fortran and, and C++ compilers, but we are working with the OpenMP committee to standardize syntax for that, and we will support the OpenMP syntax when that comes about. The Fortran standard itself is not currently moving in that direction. Okay, when you say that Fortran is not moving in that direction, uh, are you talking specifically in terms of directives? Because I've seen uh, you know, advertisements from other compiler vendors saying, you know, touting their accelerator support, GPU support in particular. Is that done with uh, compiler-specific extensions then and not yes. language? Okay, I see. Yes. Yeah, the, the other vendors who, who have uh, added accelerator support in, uh, in Fortran, they all do it with directives. There's various uh, competing models. The, the Fortran Standards Committee is pausing about adding significant new features to the language. And so the, for the next revision of the Fortran standard, which is going to be called Fortran 2015, um, there are just a few new features being added. The enhanced seed interoperability to help MPI is one of them. And additions to co-arrays is another one. Okay, and that, that makes sense because you want to standardize on best practices, not standardize on, on new uh, things that haven't really been, been proven yet. So there's kind of a – so if I can infer what you're saying, then there's kind of a shootout going between uh, which one of these competing approaches is, is going to work. Is that a, is that a fair characterization? Um, well, there does seem to be some competition in that space, yes. Okay. Do you ever see a, a merging of ideas? Are the, are the models similar that, such that – they could be combined into a grand unified model, or is it more of an either-or kind of thing? Well, I'm not the best expert on this, but my understanding is there's, there is a lot of overlap, and the differences are, are significant, but not a large part of the, of the approach. All of the approaches I've seen uh, require the user to indicate a, a body of code that is to be offloaded to the coprocessor. Um, the nice thing I like about Intel's model is that the coprocessor is optional and that if you are running your program on a system that doesn't have an Intel Xeon Phi processor, uh, then it will, the code will just run on your regular Intel processor, the x86 processor. Uh, whereas the, the other approaches, if you don't have the uh, the particular coprocessor that it's designed for, you're dead. <laughs> so what are some of the uh, features that you would like to see added to the Fortran standard that are not quite there yet? I would like us to implement what's in the standard now. And I would let look to users to help us find a direction for what need what they need to be added. I think that Fortran is an incredibly capable language as it is now. I've been programming in it for, you know, for decades, and I write lots of things in Fortran that you might not normally expect to be done in Fortran, and I've seen customers do that too. I don't think there's anything really that sticks out in my mind as Fortran is useless unless it has feature X, Y, and Z. Okay, so one question I ask uh, most software developers who, who we, we talk to here, um, and, and this really has nothing to do with, with Fortran or, or anything like that, but it's just a, a question I like to ask people is, what do you guys use internally there in, in the Intel shop for version control uh, for the code that you develop for the Fortran compiler and why? I just love to hear people's different answers for this. Intel is currently using subversion. We had been using, what, CVS, I think it is, before that. Uh, 
and we switched to Subversion within the last year or so. Okay, well, Steve, thank you very much for your time. Uh, you'll be able to find this show online soon at rce-cast.com, and you can also find all of our back shows there. Uh, Steve, uh, where can we find more information about the Fortran standard? The Fortran standard, uh, j 3 fortran Dot org, I believe, is the uh, website for the U.S. Fortran Standards Committee, and that has links to the current standard and lots of information about the standard. Um, you could go to uh, software.intel.com to find out about Intel's Fortran products and also our uh, analysis tools that work with Fortran. And also, we have links in our uh, sort of frequently asked questions to the Fortran Standards and various other articles. Okay, Steve. Thank you very much again. Thanks for your time, Steve. My pleasure.